Hi, my name is Vishal and I'm a senior trainer in multimedia education. I have a 18 years of industry experience and let's get started with the video. Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's have a look on uh, a generator. So before going into that, I would like to talk about uh, some features in Bake Mesh Map. So uh, here I have opened a sample. Uh, called meat mat and uh, in this I just wanted to work on the body and I'm going to select that body here and then go to bake mesh maps and here uh, this uh, step of baking uh, maps is very important so that the smart materials and lot of generators will respond or work uh, keeping this maps in mind so I'll, I'll enable all these uh, maps which are there here to on and then uh, we have a bake uh, body to or bake selected textures so you have this options here so I'm just hitting that bake selected texture and then it will take some time in baking the textures for you and then you get a result and that maps which are baked here will be used in the process of procedural texturing so i i would uh, also take you through all these maps and their uses in very brief way so that we can better understand our generators So once uh, uh, the textures are baked, you could able to see uh, this all textures came up. From here, you can just uh, open this menu and then start looking after the uh, maps which were baked. So we have a normal map. We have a world space normal. So if you could able to see one direction is in one color, another direction is in one color and another direction is in one color so the direction of the polygon faces are colored based on in which direction they are and this information is used by our uh, procedural texture uh, generators so we have id which is uh, a different color code given to different parts of the object based on uvs or polygons this is ambient occlusion which is uh, giving me the dark uh, shadows in the contact regions so ambient occlusion is altogether a different uh, you know map uh, which gives a, a shadow just like overcast sky it's very useful in creating contact shadows so we have a curvature which is uh, identifying any time a model takes a turn then that area is basically colored differently showing that is the edge of that particular model okay so we have a position which is uh, basically telling this object is located in 3d space and uh, based on that part of object a color is given so if it is positioned in x-axis it may give a red color if any part of the object is in the y-axis it's green color anything is in the z axis got uh, blue color and based on the uh, value uh, the red keeps or the green keeps increasing so position is altogether telling uh, that this object is located in this area based on the color so we have thickness which part of the object is thick 
uh, is given with a white color and wherever it is becoming thin it's a bit darker color okay used in subsurface scattering and all that area so this uh, material this textures what we have created work behind um, all the generators we have let's say if we go to the smart materials okay and uh, assign any of the smart material here let me choose um, this machinery and then just drop it over there and you get uh, uh, some textures okay and I should able to see certain uh, edge wear and tear happening here uh, which is basically with the help of uh, mm, the curvature map and uh, sometimes you, you just I just uh, drag a different material you should see a completely different result you should see that edges are more uh, worn or uh, wear and tear happen uh, comparative to the center of this object okay so this uh, is automatically decided by you know uh, the curvature map the curvature map was actually helping it and you could see some dirt sedimentation and all that happening here again this is based on the same maps what we have so uh, so what we will do is we'll try to understand how uh, generators will uh, come into picture so i'll just take a fill okay and then we have generator so generator can be added as a stack of layers which uh, in any layer you have whether it is normal fill layer or a mask layer so we have uh, these all um, you know tools um, which can be working let's say if i take a fill in this and then you get a color you get that uh, because you have chosen the fill type of effect but if i choose a generator there uh, again generator is one object but you need to tell what type of generator you want to add so generators are unique uh, programs uh, like let's say if i take this auto stitch generator uh, what it will do is it will add uh, automatic stitch lines based on the curvature maps what we have okay so it's it's just a black and white uh, well, let's try to create something on this so i'm going to take a new uh, fill layer here and then just give a nice color so i'm giving a red color here and i'll uh, make a duplicate of this particular layer okay and then select that to a different color so i'm taking a green color on the top so um, one is if i can add a generator it can be added into a layer stack or it can be added into the mask stack so i'll take a mask here which is uh, going to be a white mask and then in that i'll be adding a generator here okay so generator are just like a simple automated program as i told so i'll be picking this first uh, generator here called 3d distance and then uh, you should able to see the red color is on the bottom and um, that area of green has been become transparent so if you choose the y position okay so that uh, shifts from uh, bottom to up and if i do this from top to bottom it will move you can increase the contrast and play with the offset values so that you can keep the green on the bottom side and red on the top so red is a, a layer on top of that i put a green layer so green layers partial the part of the green layer has become transparent because in the layer mask i've added a generator called 3d distance okay if i hit false that becomes opposite of that now uh, when we generally try to uh, create uh, uh, something like grunge maps and all okay uh, we can okay we have lot of grunge maps here you can just drop that grunge map and you should able to see that grunge uh, is uh, 
there on the bottom so position wise let's say dirty walls uh, will be there and uh, um, the bottom part of the walls becomes so dirty uh, based on so many things like uh, water fall and spill over the lower part of the wall or sometimes you want the upper part of the wall to be more dirty especially when it comes for the compound walls the water the rain water falls and start dripping from that and then the dirt will flow and then the top part becomes dirty so position based masking is used in uh, such places where a half of the object you want it to be masked uh, based on its position okay so this objects the lower side has been become dirty in comparative to the upper part you can also try exploring the um, exposition there okay where it moves from one side to the other side okay and also you can put it uh, only to the front side of the object or back side of the object okay so this is a really useful uh, filter in terms of you know putting all that dirt and grunge to the lowest part of the object okay uh, so that is 3d distance for you